Face reality, people. Movies are dead. Games are dead. Narrative, dead. Media is nothing but neural trigger response and viral conditioning. Wait, what are you two talking about? All right, another uh, reaction video here. This time, uncut hoops talking about Caitlin Clark and the, uh, I guess, the response from WNBA players or former WNBA players. And honestly, I I've wanted to talk about this chick for a while i just haven't and now these recent games are popping off and everyone's making videos about it I'm like all right why not and i did i did watch the game i watched the lsu uh iowa uh game and she, yeah she's fucking shooting from the logo <laughs> stuff carrying shit out there but we have to be honest about these things i watched the, the following game too usc yukon with uh, with Juju Watkins, I think it's Watkins. She's fucking. She's pretty nasty, man. She's legit nasty. The Paige Becker's girl is pretty good too. Uh, but I'm gonna use this video as like a little uh, drug mule to <laughs> spread my message. Uh, just just to talk about the topic because I know it, right now it's a popular thing to talk about. I'm like. Huh. It's a better time than, than most. Fucking chance to analyze the athlete, analyze the narratives around the athlete, on and on and so forth. With so without further ado, here's uncut hoops with WNBA WNBA players get exposed by Caitlin Clark. Here we go. As I'm sure you guys know, when it comes to the WNBA, not the biggest fan of their league and the attitude of some of their players. As looking at this league, the majority of players blame men, as well as NBA players, for the sport not being successful. And one of the popular uh, narratives is that men don't support us, men don't tune in, blah, 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 blame men, it's all their fault. I don't know if he's being more a culture warrior about it or if he's read these quotes. I haven't, so I haven't looked into it. I don't fucking know. But, uh... <laughs> Well, I, I, I've heard something. I don't know. I've heard something like this where, um, yeah, they feel like they're not being supported by men. Yeah. Well, sorry to tell them, but your product's not as good. Like, why lie to ourselves about this? Like, you guys can't move like the men do. You don't dribble like the men. You don't showcase skills like the men do. But there are some skillful motherfuckers there. But they get. Give me two. You're about to give me two, bro. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is something like this is something like I I'm very sure is going to happen. I make arguments about this, like, oh, give women time, and you fucking watch out. Someone's gonna be some nasty motherfucker. And it's gonna inspire someone else to become a nasty motherfucker. Like straight up, this is what's gonna happen, as we're s seeing right now, right, with these college girls. Yeah. They're the talent and the idea that the growth of talent is possible to do in a very short period of time because a lot of it is skill based. But if no one's looking at you critically, how's your skill going to get better if you're not doing it yourself? So let me ask you this, though. In regards to, um, I heard you say a couple of times yesterday, like, oh, the three point is an equalizer, right? Yes. But. You're also looking at, what's her name, the Juju girl? Yes. Where you're saying, no, this per this girl moves like an athlete. Where, like, Katie yes. Clark is still moving like a girl. So can you get into that a little bit, the differentiation? Well, I, I will because he's good. I I've watched this video already. He's going to get into, or he's going to uh, say something here about Caitlin that Clark, about her ability. And I will yeah. use that as a moment to bring up, like, what my eye test is telling me so okay. I'll, I'll let him get into it but yeah the WNBA product is just, sorry you're not there yet but can you be competitive as far as like team to team competitiveness where it's like it is a legitimate sport i'm not sitting here saying like oh these are illegitimate like no a lot of these girls are fucking nasty but they're not quite there yet and i don't mean running and dunking and slam dunking and all that shit i mean like skill like high level skill that resemble like 
that can compete with men on a skill level. Forget about having 48 inch verticals. I don't mean that. I mean something where like you have this girl who can shoot from fucking the logo or someone can do a dribble step back very coordinatedly or do Euro steps very coordinatedly. I'll, I'll get into this, but like, I, I haven't, I don't see that yet. I don't see it yet. Personally. So also, I heard, I heard this one guy, this guy that's like really like bullish on, um, on the WNBA, like he really likes the, the WNBA, and okay. he's like, "Oh, if you don't, if you don't like the WNBA, you're just not a fan of basketball. You just want to see like high flying dunks and a whole bunch of things." I mean, what would you would say? That's not the case. For me, no. I, I want to see extreme like skill. I want to see skill. Yeah, like, top notch skill, and you you'll be able to watch from the highlights this guy plays. They're not moving the same way as. Like if he compares her hair to Steph Curry, is she moving? Like, yeah, like they're not even moving like the college game. No, say. no. As far as like coordinated moves and shit like that, and as you don't have to be. Look at Luca. Is he the fastest, quickest guy on the fucking planet? No, but he has no. coordinated dribble moves, coordinated uh, ways to get his shot, get to get an open shot, or at least a, a better shot for him, or a, or a high percentage shot for him, like. There's something to that that doesn't require the most freakish athleticism in the world. It doesn't. It's just working on these to become more skillful. Like you can take a weak, like in baseball, you can take a weakling of a fucking hitter or pitcher, and let's say they don't throw that very that hard, but like just from being athletic, they can't throw hard. But if you adjust some of their mechanics, you can increase. Their pit, their pitch speed by fucking eight to ten miles an hour on just on mechanics alone. Thus, it looks like you're moving faster, even though you you haven't gained an, an ounce of fucking strength. Granted, the women should do that too. They should be more in the gym and like. I understand you want to keep the girl body or girl girl figure. Maybe maybe that's a thing. But they can definitely build legit. Muscle. Look at Asia Wilson, bro. That chick's like strong as fuck. Coordinated, skilled. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying like, like, oh, imagine if that's like the right. Obviously, she's great, but imagine if like something near that is like the baseline, yeah, of the talent. Now it's completely. Now it's a different game. Now it's competitive, and then imagine someone standing out from in, in spite of all that, of all this new competition, someone standing out as like the best. Now you got something going. Here. Now you have franchise players. Now you have, you know, dynasties, shit like that. But, but let's keep playing this video. I'll, I'll go on about it. Well, just last night, that overall notion was completely debunked. As in a women's college basketball game, Iowa versus LSU, Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, a whopping 7 million people tuned in to watch those two square off. Compare that to the WNBA Finals just months ago. That series couldn't even crack a million viewers at their best. And you gotta ask the question, why can a WNBA game, WNBA series, Asia. not get as many viewers as a college game with quote unquote worst players? Well, the Stewie's answer a good is player, quite yeah. simple. College basketball has Caitlin Clark. If you watch this girl play, yeah. she hits 30 foot bombs, has dimes like magic, and handles like a female Steph Curry. And, and here's where I'm going to stop him. Now, her shooting, 100%. Like I, like my eye test, not a basketball expert, but just my eye test. Yeah, she can sh fucking shoot the fucking basketball. She can shoot it under duress. She can shoot it wide open. She can shoot. Uh, does she have like some step backs to get herself open? A little? Yeah, she has those two as well. Very coordinated. Very, like they, you could tell she worked on this shit for a while, and she can shoot the fucking basketball. Can she dribble like Steph Curry? No, yeah. no. And I'm not talking about how fast she moves. I'm talking about like coordinated handling the basketball. No, she can't. So don't put it in the category of female Steph Curry, because guess what? Some chick, there's already chicks like that who can handle like Juju Watkins. This girl can already handle the basketball. Like a fucking pro. And I think she's a freshman. 
he doesn't dribble, dribble, dribble like Steph like Steph does or Kyrie does, right? But she can get to her spots with her handles. She's more like a Kobe, like with her handling. I use my dribble to get to spots to shake defenders, to trick defenders, to get open, to get other people open. I use my handles for that as efficiently as I can, even though to the cameras it looks flashy, but in reality it's I'm trying to find spots to get to. That shit can do that shit. In fact, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put highlights at this moment in the video so that people can see what I'm talking about. We have six combined points four minutes into this highly anticipated marquee matchup in Watkins. Hale and Gilbert not going to play for the rest of the year. Martinez becomes a leading scorer at 12. Pulled down by Marshall. And I think she should be national freshman of the year. Certainly merits. That was a great series. Good defense there. And look at that finish. Having a stellar night. Watkins. Pump and drive. So, yeah, this girl does not have Steph Curry handles. She doesn't have the, she didn't, she didn't even have the, the quote unquote female version. Like, that's a stupid idea. The female version of dribbling a basketball? It's just dribbling. That's it. Yeah. That's all it's like, so don't lower the standards for them. Like you should be upping, like upping the standard, not upping the standards, but putting them on equal playing fields in regards to standards of skill. I'm not saying athleticism. I'm saying skill wise you should allow them to walk on the same platforms because guess what? You're not going to spot her fucking 10 points in a three point contest against Steph Curry. Cause she's going to beat him. Right. Cause she can fucking shoot. Yeah. So you, so you can't spot our points in shooting. Don't spot our points with dribbling. Or finishing at the basket. She's not a great finisher at the basket. Her passing, she has... She puts enough uh, speed on the ball, right? She has a court. She has coordinated passing, as in her one-hand passes and her chest passes and her bounce passes have coordination to them where I'm like, okay, she's yeah. a legit passer. But is she Magic Johnson? No. No. Is she capable of throwing passes like Magic can? Yes. Just by watching her throw a chest pass like fucking 50 feet down court? That means you have, you're putting enough fucking speed on the ball and coordination behind that to where, yes, you could pass like Magic. You just have to actually go pass like Magic, though. Or pass like uh, Chris Paul. Like, how much muscles does Chris Ball need to fucking spin the ball off the floor to make it, like, when it hits the ground, like, turn sideways? Like, he's spinning that ball to make it do that shit. And it's like, how much speed and power do you need to do that? You don't need crazy amounts of speed and power to do that. You just need coordination. That is it. So, let's, let's slow down the, the whole bus. Like, she's, she's Steph Curry. Like, no. And don't say female Steph Curry either. Let her be her. Like, yo, you got to work on this. You got to work on that. At the next level, I would hope she, she'd even do like weight training and shit like that. Like, hey, if you're afraid of a chick with muscle, you're gay. I'll say that right now. <laughs> Stop holding these women back from getting like muscular and shit. Let them fucking put muscle on. Right? Is Steph Curry a fucking bodybuilder? Is Kyrie Irving a bodybuilder? No, it's not their games. They don't. So these girls, these women, don't have to look like bo fucking bodybuilders. Holy shit! Unless they want to be like a powerhouse. But yeah. Uh, also, another thing that will push the women's game further is this idea of a fucking franchise player, someone who comes in and just wins. And they're yeah. the and they're the main reason for the winning. Like you're but like at the essence you're saying that there has to be a certain uh floor set that's not being set right now in the in, in WNBA from like a team to team. You have a certain athlete 
Like this is like you can't go under this as yeah. far as talent, physical ability, all that. Or one has to compensate the other. If you don't have the physical ability, you have the talent as just a ball to high basketball IQ. Yeah, well, they need to stop looking at any idea of a glass ceiling. We're like, we need to break through to the other side. Like, no, no, you need to raise, you need to uh, raise the fucking wooden floor that you're yeah. working on. Like that shit needs to go up by a lot, right? And that's on at all these levels, like the college level. It's like, sorry, these girls aren't moving like Caitlin Clark is, which is why she's fucking domi- she dominating know. these fools. They don't move like Juju Watkins. They don't. The, the Angel Reese girl, I, I'll be fair, because I heard she like, hurt her ankle or something and couldn't move around the way she normally did, does. So I'll, be yeah. fair, I'll be fair with her. Like, I, don't, I don't know enough. But I've seen plenty of highlights of Caitlin Clark, and I watched that full game, and it's like, no, she doesn't move like Steph Curry. Like, straight up. But the Juju Watkins, she's fucking special, I think. I think she's, I think she's the one, to be honest with you. You watch her move around and her coordination and shit like that, like, good God, that girl could take over the world. Like, if, if she gets enough attention behind it, if this whole Caitlin Clark phenomenon, right, spreads. Yeah. Yeah, that girl's up next. And someone's going to follow her. And then as soon as you know it, more and more of these talents are flooding into the league, and then your bottom, your bottom floor starts raising. That's what you need if you want your sport to be considered viable. At least I would hope. It should be to basketball enthusiasts, at the very least. But, uh, but yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Play some more. There we go. Unlike the WNBA, women's college basketball they have actual superstars and recognizable teams like Iowa, USC, I believe they're Carolina, traveling like that. And especially Fun. UConn. And a lot the of shots ways amazing. college basketball with superstar talent. This chick's nasty too. Superior to even men's college basketball. As looking at the best men's players, a lot of one and done guys, ton of roster turnover. Women's ball, they play four, sometimes even five years with one school and one team that already has an established identity. And above all else, LSU versus Iowa is viewed as a rivalry. And Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, yes, they are friendly, but those two players are viewed as rivals. The WNBA men's college basketball does not have that. If you have players like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, a Paige Beckers, a Juju Watkins, actual superstar players playing women's basketball, people will tune in if it's entertaining. And the storylines, that is the icing on top of the cake. The big time problem with the WNBA over the past 20 years, nobody's investing in these teams or really knows where they are. I mean, teams like the Connecticut Sun, the Dallas Wings are just super obscure and irrelevant in the sports landscape. So when I see Caitlin Clark Angel Reese have this crazy rivalry in college, what does it remind me of? Magic vs. Bird in 1979. In terms of NBA landscape, WNBA landscape, at both those points, they were struggling financially with viewership. If they handle this correctly, mold this rivalry, build a league around these two players, you're witnessing Magic and Bird in a female form. That's right. So the point is, let's rig the league. Let's rig it. Make sure uh, <laughs> Caitlin wins the, the title, goes to the M- goes to the WNBA. Dominates, make sure she wins because all the foul calls. <laughs> yeah. You got to do how David Stern did it, bro. No, I'm, I'm, tro- I'm par trolling. <laughs> no. You do got to have superstar, superstar calls, all that shit, and build them up. You don't have to, but I wouldn't like it if they did that. But let's be honest. They're the dumb, dumb fans. It works. Uh, here we go. Now, the only problem I see isn't their talent, isn't their skill. So, it's the players in the league today, so even past that, play, so isn't her behind the back was female form. Compared to like a now, sharp the behind the back. I see, isn't their talent, That's not speed and power skill. doing that. That's it's the coordination. The today, even past players giving Caitlin Clark the go-ahead to the face of their league. It's I nice mean, someone though. like Cheryl Swoops, a WNBA legend, retired player, 
was taking a dump on Clark just weeks ago. If you're going to break a record, this isn't just for Caitlyn, but you asked me about Caitlyn. If you're yeah. going to break a record, to mm -hmm. me, if it's legitimate, Female, you have fearless to break and that black. record in the same amount of time that that player said it. Okay. Right? Like so her jump shot's legit, Kelsey bro. Plum Look at that jump that shot. that record in four years. Mm -hmm. Well, Caitlyn should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, and then there's another year, you know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year. Dang. Like he or she's killing them. But you have a 25-year-old playing against a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, you, sh you should be killing them. Yeah. You're just definitely not you've 25. you've been doing it a lot longer than they have. When she comes to the league, regardless of what team she goes to that has vets on that team, mm. she probably ain't going to get 40 shots a game. Cheryl swoops in that clip right there, lied at least four different times. <laughs> Her first lie, saying Caitlin Clark should have broke the record in the same time as Kelsey Plum, because Caitlin Clark apparently played five years. Well, that's not true, only played four, and looking at total games, broke the record in 130, compared to Plum, who did it in 139. Her second lie, saying Caitlin Clark right now is 25, busting up 22-year-olds. Well, also not true. Caitlin Clark herself is 22. Now, her last lie, saying Caitlin Clark takes 40 shots per game. Again, not true, inaccurate, and false. The most attempts she's ever taken is 22.7 this season. And her overall efficiency with that many shot attempts, definitely pretty impressive. From the field, above 45%, and from three, just under 40%. So you gotta ask yourself, why would someone like Cheryl Swoops, an ambassador for her league, a retired legend, lie about Clark so lately before she can enter the league? Well, here's my theory. People like Cheryl Swoops, retired players, active players, are super jealous of Caitlin Clark Getting the attention they never got, and as oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of a leap, bro. That's yeah. a that's a leap and a half. Yeah, I don't I don't know that. Like maybe that is the case. I don't know. Maybe they don't. Maybe they look at her like, like oh, she's not that good. Maybe I could see that. But if she like. Here's another thing that would boost her. Like, if she goes to the league and says, well, watch this, and she just shits on the league, like, with her shooting, like, she improves her shooting, her ball handling, like, that, I'm telling you, her ball handling needs to go up, way up. She is a 65 with dribbling in 2K, bro, <laughs> for me right now. Like, she needs to be, uh, she needs to push into the 80s territory. Then, with that jump shot, and the uh, the way she can pass, at least her like her ability to, to throw the ball places and her mind behind it to see open people, right? It's, it does look like the, the defenses are moving really slow and they don't like they don't adjust in time. She can just slip passes here and there, but I assume they move faster in the WNBA where it's it's harder to just throw those passes like that. But yeah, definitely the ball handling if she improves that to where you are a threat to just run past to get past your fucking defender or step back and hit a three then good luck and yes they should run an offense around her straight up they should but uh like, yeah like like steve curry with curry and thompson yeah like the like as much as the nba's change as far as like this whole the three point fuss, uh, that has taken shape in all of basketball. Well, look at their offense; <laughs> it looks like five spread almost. Like everyone's near the three point line. No one's in the fucking paint except defenders. And I'm sure they have some sort of three second rule in the WNBA. If I had to guess, right? Maybe like a defense of three seconds. I don't know, honestly, but. Sure, there's something there to where the 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 big woman can't fucking sit in the middle of it like that. Sounds that sounds disrespectful. I meant big man, but they're women, so I said big woman, and it's like <laughs> that disrespectful. I apologize. I'm just being real with everyone. I, I for, forgive me. But uh, yeah, 
this is not by any means trying to take away from what this chick's done. It's just, let's be honest about it. Her dribbling's not that great. Compare her to ball handlers, to people who can handle basketballs, not fucking other girls who can't. The, the, the chick she was playing against, the Haley Van Lith or whatever on LSU. Yeah. Much more coordinated mover. Like when she moves around with the basketball, she's much more coordinated. She looked a little skittish during the game. Maybe she was nervous. Maybe she, because she transferred, still kind of learning things, but maybe she's on a short leash, leash with the coach. Who knows, whatever her reasons were. But when I've seen that girl play at her best, even the year before when she was playing for Louisville, I think, and, yeah. she, and she was like the lead player, she moves different than Caitlin Clark. She moves better than Caitlin Clark. I'm just being honest with you. But she, well, she, she like can't you, shoot like her, though. But Kaylin is so, she's so, like, exceptional at one thing. They just, they just want her so badly to be, like, the next superstar at every, at every aspect of the game. <laughs> well, I want her to be great, too, but someone's got to sit her down and be like, yeah, Yo, can you do this? Oh, you can't. What's, what's your excuse? Why can't you do this? It can't be because I have a dick and you have a vagina. That can't be your reason. It's like so. As much as she's getting praise, and she it's deserved praise. She's like carrying a team to a fucking like she's legit carrying, <laughs> like straight up. Yeah, this team was not here without her. You can probably interchange most of the players on the team, but you can't get rid of her. Otherwise, this team is not there. As much as she's doing that, you still got to be honest and realistic about these things. And no, it has nothing to do with bone structure and strength and power. Like, no, these are like, you should be in the gym working on this shit. Straight up. But, uh, all right, here we go. How much they preach WNBA? H. Backers moves better than her. Sisterhood, throwing it together. At the end of the day, a lot of these people, they are yeah. kind of selfish. And when it comes to WNBA, a league already on the margins. Someone like Clark coming in, getting so much shine, so much money, that's going to rub some players, some coaches, the wrong way. And what's the old saying? A rising tide lifts all boats. If these players were smart, the skill has they to do that. Their ship Whatever. to Caitlin Clark and ride it into the sunset. As if Clark's successful at great WNBA player, their salaries, their attention, by proxy, will increase. And if you've followed the news lately, you know Ice Cube. <laughs> offered Caitlin Clark $5 million to win the Big Three Men's League. Now that offer by Cube out of left field, surprising, but definitely pretty impressive for Caitlin Clark. And take a wild guess, was Cube's offer received with applause, or was it downplayed and diminished? Well, here's your answer from active player in the WNBA. If you're gonna say that it's for that, Damn then stand right. on that. But I don't think it's. I think he's trying to make a business decision, which he's a businessman. That makes sense. But to mask it in this, mm -hmm. I want to uplift and support WNBA players and women athletes is kind of a cop out, I think, and I don't think it really makes any sense. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. With these WNBA players, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Someone like Andre mm -hmm. Godala gives a player on Twitter props says way to go number 23 you're playing great what do they do accept that praise of course not they respond to it was iggy talking about her she's number 22 i don't know i, I don't know what he's talking about what, what tweet he's talking about yeah y'all attack him and say he's quote disrespecting them i mean these players I they don't feel like for looking support, it up beg for money attention tv deals and then when some guy comes out of left field, gives one of their players that, they attack that guy for his very generous offer. And saying Ice Cube, a <laughs> businessman, only wants attention, wants clout. Well, look, he's a businessman making a business decision. Caitlin Clark, unlike this girl, generates ratings, interest, and most importantly, money. If you truly want to grow your league, grow your sport, get more interest, eyes, and get paid more, it's pretty simple. Embrace someone like Clark, who's electric. And for Caitlin Clark, a lot of... See, this is... Uh, <laughs>
It's like it's not what it's the video now is not what it was meant to be in the beginning or so. But what do you mean by that? Well, it's like he was like wasn't he arguing um skill? Yes. And now he's ar- now he's arguing fucking b- business and like <laughs> narrative. It's like considering a channel that complains a lot about LeBron James and the marketing yeah. campaign around LeBron James that boosts his he's, legacy. He's making a marketing campaign for her. Why would you want to recreate that? Because she yeah. clearly, like I, you can watch with the eye test and see the flaws of what of of okay. her skills. Yeah, set. Now, thank you for saying that. Now you now you remind me. He was saying like, oh look, there's this, there's a, a drop off in skill in this league compared to the like compared to the women to the women's um NCAA or whatever, and um. You want to see the league succeed and cultivate a higher bar for skill. Yeah. And his method, his methodology to getting there is to be all, it's, it's to be like what? It's to be, um, I don't know, like opportunistic and um, like a and, marketing um, campaign. Kind of, yeah, marketing campaign. So it's not about the on the on the court anymore. It's off the court shit you're bringing up. <laughs> but you want the on the court product to be better, but you're not really focusing on that. You're focusing on the narrative behind Caitlin Clark being successful off the court. Yeah, I mean, he... which is like it's, it's, it's team play one on one. You okay? You like Caitlin Clark? <laughs> you want to see? I mean, what, what if what if the NBA was kind of down and out? A bit, right? Let's say they were down and out, and you have this phenomenon come from college, and his name's Jimmer Fredette. Uh, what do we do then? Do we still like ignore f- possible flaws at the next level, or like what do we do there? What if she turn? Yeah. What if she's Jimmer Fredette and she's not Steph Curry? Yeah, that needs to be paid. Like, you gotta, <laughs> you put a you bunch of marketing behind money. her. You get all these eyes here, then. You get Jimmer for that, and it's like, oh fuck. Well, I hope. Well, I mean, like you know what I mean? Yeah, because I hope it's. I don't know. That's a good point because it, like you're saying, you're breaking down what he's like comparing her to. Like, oh, she's this, she's that. It's like, well, she's not really these things except for the shooting part. Yeah. She has a a a world of improvement to go in these other areas. Yes. But also, but also, let's be honest. What she is now, like, like, like you're saying, like, oh, you build an all, like, you get a smart coach in the WNBA, and you build around her strengths. Who, yep. like, she could probably take off in the next level. Oh yeah. And it goes back to what you were saying of the product isn't isn't there yet not good enough so is 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 the league going is the league in general going to try to find ways to get better at get get better players not even athletes better players or cultivate an environment where you can make players better to stop her and 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 also outscore her and you know shit like that yeah. Or are they just gonna? Or are they just gonna market her to death? Like, oh, she's. A, there's, it's a self fulfilling prophecy that you're saying. Like, oh, she's she's the greatest of all time. She can't be stopped. And it's <laughs> and it says more about the league than it does her. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's like, yeah, that's the problem. Where it's like it's saying more about the league that she can't be figured out than it is than it's it is about her greatness. Yes. There and needs you to... don't want that. You don't want that. Like you're saying, these 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 young these young girls coming up behind her, like they have to go in there and be like, nah, fuck that. Like, like literally, like a magic bird situation. Like, nah, we're like we're better and shit, and we're gonna keep working on our craft. Yes. And it's almost like the off the court shit gets in the way. Where like once you be like, oh, you're good enough. Don't worry about it. Now we're just gonna market you to death. <laughs> yeah, that would be just that's a that's shaky foundation 
to build your league off of if you, if they would if they went that route of, of what you just described like for, forget about it you you need you want someone like caitlin clark who, who is great at these things at certain things right and yeah. her skill level is supposed to inspire other people to tap into their skill levels yeah. and then you start the loot the league gets boosted from that not only does it get boosted but the idea of com- of competition st- steps up and athleticism steps up with it this is the thing that, like, teams are got to build to like how do we beat her okay or who's in, maybe someone who's like Caitlin Clark, but maybe maybe they're better. Maybe they have a, a higher ceiling. We can work with this player and build them up. Or, oh fuck, look at Caitlin doing this. Well, I got to get bigger, faster, stronger to keep up with her, or whatever. Like these these things yeah. happen with. But if you do it inorganically with this fake bullshit marketing, fucking bullshit. Like was MJ? Yes, MJ had a shit ton of marketing, right? But like, was he not the fucking man? Was he not yeah. dominating the fucking league? Yeah, he was. So was LeBron. So was Kobe. Like these guys were dominating the fucking league. Yeah, yeah. And we've already seen this happen. Like, 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 like I'll be honest. I'm kind of ignorant. I don't know Brittany Griner. So Brittany Griner should be like the, like the Shaq of the league. I don't know about Shaq. She should be like the Tim Duncan of the league. Oh, right like compared, you know what I'm saying? Like a dominant big. Yeah. A big player, like in that, but she's really like I don't know. I don't think she's that. No, nah, I don't think she's that either. I think. Oh well, they actually. Well, here's the thing: when this guy say like, "Well, the WNBA need to lean into so they're a big time player," like Brittany Griner was kind of was that. She's a six yeah. six foot nine dunking the basketball in college, like and not just that one every so often, like Lisa Leslie or Candace Parker, but a straight up like. I dunk more than I, I can dunk more than once in a, in one game, type of shit. I'm six foot nine, right? And they're like, "Oh, yeah. the Brittany Griner Duncan." And they boot, tried to boost her up. They got her in the lead. They probably put some marketing behind her, and it's like, at the end of the day, <laughs> there we go. The number one, the best marketing tool is striving for excellence. It's the number you yes. can't like, you can't replicate that. Yes. Where you present a problem, and then the rest of the of the of the league, like, right, we have to solve this problem. And, and on the court, I mean, like, oh, like, this person, like, this person is unstoppable. Now we need to cultivate an environment where we're getting one of those on our team. Yes. Getting yeah. a whole team of, because like whatever, like let me put an arbitrary number. Let's say, let's say on average. Each team scores, give or take, 65 points a game on average. Something like that. Yeah. And then, like, oh, so how do we get it to 90? How do we get it to 85? And may, and um, increase efficiency, increase ball movement, all that. Like, I, like, like I'm, I'm kind of, like, I'm definitely naive. I'm definitely not in the know of WNBA player, like, play. Yeah. But I'm – I. But it's like going over what you're saying, going over what pretty I've heard a lot of people say like the product is not it's not there. So why is that why is that the case? Because I mean, I know they're in the gym, they're trying hard, they're trying to be better. So what is the actual problem here? Is it just complete like you're saying like I don't wanna I don't wanna get into narratives, but it's like oh like breaking the ceiling, like is breaking the ceiling more important than just putting out the best product possible? Yeah. The best, the best com- competition in the world for women, isn't that more imp- important? Yeah, oh, and, well, wouldn't, and wouldn't that bring what you want at the end, anyways? Well, back when Cheryl Soups was playing with the Comets, yeah. Cynthia Cooper, and like yeah. Lisa Leslie on the Sparks, like they, dude, they were like a dynasty. The Comets were like a dynasty. Remember that? Yeah. I remember this shit. And I was actually watching the games. I think people, other people were watching the games too. And there was like hype behind it and shit like that. Right? What happened? <laughs> I can't say. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Maybe the product fell off. Maybe the, like, the evolution didn't cool. take enough of an evolutionary step. I don't know. Yeah, like, I understand you want a little market, you want a little buzz. But it's, I don't know. There has to be an equilibrium. Yeah. 
And I don't like I don't know. I, I definitely am super ignorant. I don't know the ins and outs. Yeah, neither do I, honestly. But um I don't know like yeah, there has to be some there has to be some problem with the way the the WNBA is ran as far as talent wise. <laughs> talent evaluation, player development, like I don't know if there's because I, I don't want to be like I don't want to sound stupid, but there is like there is like money problems too. I don't know if that plays. A, I think I don't know because they're like I've heard shit like oh we have to drive like we have to fly charter this and that, but I would be I would be more interested in like what are they doing on the off season? What are they doing to um work on their crafts like things of that nature? Because you see like. Sorry to say, like, I've seen, like, a lot of lowlights where, like, there's all air balls. There's, like, all types of, like, kind of embarrassing things that it could be taken out of context, but it's, like, I don't know. Yeah. You don't really see that in the NBA like that. And I don't mean, like, just because they're high flyers. Just, like, under the rim guys also. Like, there's there's an aspect of finishing that I think is missing in the league. Yes. I I agree. I agree. It's uh... <laughs> It, and here's so the, I, I, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, I, I keep my, here's the thing. And this is just, this is just my perspective uh, in how I, how I've looked at it. Cause I'll, every so often I'll take a peek at WNBA highlights or like, Oh, someone's saying this person's a great player. Let me go watch, watch them play or something like that. And I'm like, Oh, that's pretty good. All right. Or like, Oh, interesting. All right. But, um, it's it feels like I'm still watch like waiting to see that one player who's just like okay you can't t- say anything about this person's game. There's nothing about this person's game that you can be like, oh well they're moving like quote unquote like a girl. I don't even, I don't even believe in that nonsense personally. I yeah. think yeah, but that's how people will look at it, which is just basically just meaning like uncoordinated movements. That to where it's like they do like randomly like like you said the low lights look like very like low low lights <laughs> like they look pretty low and you, I'm just waiting for like okay who's that player that's just like on on it all the time their fuck ups don't look like their fuck ups don't look like the rest of the league's fuck ups like it, like yeah of course they'll shoot like everyone shoots an air ball or hit, hits all backboard or some shit like that yeah. but. Ninety-five percent of the time, that motherfucker is near the rim or in the fucking hoop, and they're just like, they're just like that. When they dribble, when they everyone dribbles the, the basketball off their foot every so often, like that happens. But most of the time, that shit is sharp. They're not looking down at their feet when they're dribbling. Not not that uh, professional women or co- even college women do that. Right? They all have their heads up. But I'm saying like you're doing complex maneuvering while also yeah. like you know looking like an assassin looking for holes in the defense. Like, that's what I keep my eye on. And then when I saw this Juju Watson girl, Watkins girl, I'm like, holy fuck. Who is this motherfucker? And how come she's not getting, she should be getting shine like this? Straight up. She what she averaged? 28 points as a freshman? All these other people we're talking about are like senior, juniors and seniors and shit. This chick's a freshman and she looks the best out of all of them. Movement wise, like moving around, yeah. she looks the best. No, I saw her ball handling. Yeah, her ball handling is very crisp. Yes, quick release on her jump shot. Shoots from all ranges. Euro steps. Yeah, uh, second. All that yeah. shit, man. She even knows how to flop correctly, bro. Like, <laughs> like, like it's like she's I'm a basketball, like a big time basketball I'm, fan. Yeah, I'm a basketball like you. Where's, where's that shit at? Yes. Like a mad like. Like no offense to women's basketball, but I hope these girls aren't watching videotape of other female basketball players unless they're super nasty. It, like they should be watching. Like oh fuck, I want to learn how to dribble. I'm gonna watch Kyrie fucking Irving. Kyrie. I want to shoot. I'm watching Steph. Like yeah, you should be watching the best of the best, no matter what. Just like female, like go look at female fighters in the UFC. Their coordination is on fucking point. They can they have court like the top ones at least. Their coordination rivals the men. And their skill sets rival the men. Legitimately. Are they as big and strong as all the men? Like no. But can they move? 
Yes, go watch little tiny little oh, Rose gosh. Nama Yunus, bro. Yeah. Look at her move around. Like that's a fucking fighter. That's not a female fighter. That's a fighter, period. That's what this sport fucking needs. Straight up. But all right. We got a minute and a half left of this thing. Let's play it out. Comparisons, Steph Curry 2.0. We've seen all that. But I think one of the more <laughs> apt comparisons that hasn't been made is comparing her to Pistol Pete. Not just playstyle shooting, the flare, the flash. It's more than that. Pistol Pete back in the day when he came into the NBA, due to his playstyle, flashy nature, was reviled by his teammates and especially opponents. This is more narrative shit I instead of like... going pro, yeah. being so electric, so flashy, pulling from 35 feet. For a lot of her own teammates, especially opponents, they're going to despise her and go out of their way to diminish her. If you think Pistol Pete had it bad with men in the 70s, imagine Caitlin Clark in the 2020s with women. It's going to be a thousand times worse. So uh, that right there is the end of the video. And once again, Angel Reese. Did you just say imagine that, but with women, it's going to be a thousand times worse. God damn. Yeah. Dude's out here pimping in the background. There we go. Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, had me watching women's basketball from around 8 o'clock till 12. To nail the point home, myself and many don't hate women's sports. What we hate is the attitude entitlement of the WNBA. And maybe, just wow. maybe, with players like these, superstars like these, that tide will start turning in this league, I should become interesting and watchable. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll yeah, okay. So you kind of ended up not actually making it about the sport itself, just narratives around the sport, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and it is what it is. That, that's, that's a lot. It seems like a lot of the responses I'm hearing. That's what it seems like. But uh, it is what it is. I think the skill level needs just, they need to raise, raise the floor up. Skill more coordinated skill needs to start entering the league and it needs to be like emphasized right from coaches yeah. to parents that are teaching kids that want to play basketball like go find out what these mother find out who out like go on youtube like who's the best dribbler in the fucking world look them up and then look for drills that they do half the coordination like that I remember from being a kid, like it was something like baseball, it's from watching pros play. It's from watching them on TV and trying to emulate them. Hey, like trying to watch the best of the best. Straight up. Yeah. And it's not because they have dicks. It's because it's a skill set they worked on over and over and over and over and over again. Even some of the people we consider lazy and... and in professional sports, work on that shit over and over and over, much more than the average person. So imagine just looking at strictly the best, then you can get like a little bit of a peek into like, okay, how to become great at something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking shit though. Who knows? Uh, anything else, Anthony? Before I end this? No, I know. Yeah, I'm good. All right. There's our reaction to uncut hoops. WNBA players get exposed by Caitlin Clark. Like I said, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.